evaluating the derivative of function. So this time again, we have a quotient and then we have x square minus one by itself in the numerator and then in the denominator we have a quantity a linear function but it's raised to the power four so guys again we can clearly see that there's a quotient so we definitely need to use the quotient rule but is it just the quotient rule that's going to help us to solve this or evaluate the derivative or we may need something more but again first we have to decide what is going to be my first step obviously there is no uh, the whole thing is not raised to the, any any power, so that automatically throws out the possibility of directly starting with a chain rule, right? So if we cannot directly start the chain rule, it's, it's not going to actually help us to solve this one. So what we can do is we can use the quotient rule first because it's the quotient of two functions. It's the ratio of two functions. Guys, if it was a product, instead of like these two quantities being divided, if it was a product of these two quantities, again, we would not just start with the chain rule first. First, we would use the product rule, and then we may have to use the chain rule once we kind of set up the first few steps, okay? So again, I already have the general form for the quotient rule if we consider f to be the numerator and g to be the denominator. So uh, let us consider this to be my f function and this to be my g function so that we are consistent with the general form or general formula for the quotient rule. Now I'm just gonna apply the quotient rule on this. So the g prime of x, the derivative of this function is going to be, first I have to find the derivative of the f function according to the quotient rule, which is simply going to be 2x. And then I have to multiply that. So in parentheses, I'm going to write the g function, which is 3x plus 4 raised to the power 4. Then I have a minus, right, as suggested by the formula. Then I have to do the derivative of the g function. Now, guys, let us look at the denominator. Now, when I look at the denominator, it is this whole thing raised to the power four. So one cannot just directly use any, like just the power rule. Although we are going to use the power rule, but there's something more to the power rule. And in this case, it's just basically going to be the chain rule, using the chain rule. But how do we use the chain rule? Guys, let us try to keep it simple. I don't want to make it too complicated because it is not too complicated. So we just consider this whole thing inside the parentheses. We kind of think of that as just a big X to the power four. So to do the derivative of that, we just use the power rule using the power rule what do we do is we bring the 4 up front and then I have 3x plus 4 raised to the power n minus 1 so 4 minus 1 is going to give me what 3 and then I cannot just stop right here I still have to multiply by the derivative of the inner that is the difference between using a chain rule and just simply the power rule okay so multiplying by the derivative of the inner would be multiplying by the derivative of this piece so derivative of 3x is just 3 derivative of 4 is 0 so it is basically just multiplying by 3 we do that and then I still have to multiply this whole thing. So don't forget, you still have to multiply by the f function by itself. You don't have to find the derivative of f function. You just have to multiply. So you got to write that in parentheses as well. It's a binomial. Guys, this whole thing has to be divided by g squared, which in this case is this quantity squared. But when I square this quantity, it would be like four times two, right? Because I'm doing x to the power m to the power n. Guys, remember the ex rules of exponents, x to the power m raised to the power n. What do you do to the exponents? You just multiply them. So in this case, four times two will be eight. So I can write just simply three x plus four raised to the power eight, right? So we think, I think we can, we, we, should, we can still simplify this. And if we can, we got to simplify as much as we can. Uh, let us see if we can, how we can simplify. Guys, what I'm looking, what I'm seeing here is that there's this term and this term which is repeating in both. So I think I can take out as a greatest common factor, uh, this whole thing, 3x plus 4 raised to the power 3 because I have a 3 exponent here and 4. So I can take out 3. Uh, that would be my greatest common factor here. And then let us see what is left inside the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, guys, I will be left with 2x and then I still will be left with 3x plus 4 because I need 3x plus 4 raised to power 4. I only have 3 here, so I got to multiply by one of these again to get that back, right? We want to make sure that when we distribute this, we get back to the previous step, right? And then let us see what we are left with the second term here. Guys, this whole thing is already outside. All we need, are left with is 4 times 3. We can already simplify this. That is 12. And then x squared minus 1. And that is all we are left with this term. And guys, this whole thing has to be divided by what 3x 3x plus 4 raised to the power 8 so instead of writing it 3x plus 4 raised to the power 8 can i break it down as 3 times 3x plus 4 raised to the power 5 because 5 plus 3 is 8 so uh, the reason why i broke it down so that we can clearly see that this term and this term will just cancel out or cross out right 
it's the same quantity divided by itself. It's just going to cross out. So all we need to do now is we need to simplify this thing, right? So how would we simplify? Not too difficult. We got to distribute things and then we got to see if there's any like terms. We got to combine those like terms, right? So let us go ahead and try to do that. Uh, guys, this is going to be 6x squared, right? Plus 4 times 2 is 8x, then minus 12x squared. Negative 12 times negative 1 is going to be positive 12. And this whole thing has to be divided by 3x plus 3x plus 4 raised to the power 5. I think we can do one more step here because we have some like terms. This guy and this guy, we can combine them. So they will add up to negative 6x squared, right? And then uh, plus 8x plus 8x and then I have a plus 12 and then this whole thing has to be divided by 3x 3x plus 4 raised to the power 5 I think we can stop right here and this will be my uh, derivative of this given function again guys of course one has to be careful simplifying stuff and all that that is very important to get the correct answer you don't I mean once you apply the right uh, procedure right method you don't want to mess up and get a wrong answer whether it's mistakes and signs or anything guys you want to make sure you get the right answer but that is like simplifying this carefully and writing out all the steps clearly that is very important but the most important thing here was to figure out like hey first of all i should start with the quotient rule because it is the quotient i cannot just directly start with using the chain rule once i start using the quotient rule then i quickly realized once I was trying to find the derivative of the denominator in this case looking at the denominator we could see that we have to use or one has to use the chain rule on that we use the chain rule again trying to keep it simple uh, we found we wrote, we wrote the chain we're using the chain rule we wrote the derivative of this function times the f and then we simplify it and finally we have we have the final derivative so guys this is example five uh, there's two more to go so keep working keep trying to practice these problems. If you need any helps or any hints, let me know. I'll be happy to actually take up some more problems. If you are challenged, you are, you are finding them difficult. I can go back and revisit some of these problems or I can do some other problems that you need help with. So guys, till then, take